are, where you're from, how many times you've been here, or how few times, you're all welcome in God's house. A few intimations to begin with this morning. There's a seminar taking place on Thursday the 2nd of November at the Fairman Newfield Baptist Church entitled Why Fathers Matter and what support there is for us there is for them. If you know someone who might be interested in this, I can pass on the details uh, to let you know. I have to say I know the Fairman's a long way from here. But the issue of fatherhood and uh, young men in our society is something I'm particularly passionate about. So if you know of anyone for whom this might be of value, please let me know and I can pass on the details. St. Margaret's Church in Glenothis celebrates its 70th anniversary and there could be a concert by Thomas Russell Mill's uh, Brass Band on Friday the 3rd of November at 7.30pm. All will be made very welcome and you pay whatever you can at the door. And there will be teas and coffees to be interviewed as well. There's lots of celebrations going on just now. Newport and K Parish Church is celebrating its 150th anniversary and there are spent a series of special events at the weekend of the 4th and 5th of November, including a concert featuring the Scottish Police and Community Choir. If you're able to go along to any of these, I have some details here so I can pass those on to you. Um, and I know that there is a connection between ourselves here in Kilrenny and Newport on Tay because of Amos being your uh, former interim moderator. So uh, if you're free next weekend, I'm sure they'll be delighted to see uh, people from Kilrenny in Newport. Saturday, the 4th of November at 7 pm, the Royal British Legion Scotland hold a festival of remembrance uh, in the Cairns Hall in Dundee. The band of the Royal Regiment of Scotland will be playing as well as the High School of Dundee Pipe Band. There will be a muster of representatives from the armed forces, uniformed as civilian services and the cadet forces. If you like, it's a local version of the event you will see on television on Remembrance Day. Uh, so if you're able to go to that, or if you know someone who'd be interested, again, please pass the information on. And no doubt, uh, if you go to the here for the website or the ticket office, they'll have tickets for you. <coughs> Something slightly more local. The Book and Jigsaw Cafe uh, starts this coming Wednesday, the 1st of November, 2 to 4 pm. This is a great success last year and something we tried for the first time and it's something I'm delighted to say that Anne and her team are willing to do once again. Next Wednesday afternoon, as a one-off, will be a fundraiser for Macmillan. And um, so, if you're able to go along, there is no charge, just donate whatever you can. The cafe will run thereafter each week, each Wednesday afternoon, uh, until the end of March, which is the short break of the Christmas New Year period. And it's an opportunity to meet up with friends, make new friends, browse through a huge selection of books and jigsaws, um, and it's just a way of lightening the dark days over the winter. Um, so please support that ever we do. Just advance warning that Remembrance Sunday the 12th of November, our service will begin at 10.45am rather than the normal 9.45am. And that will allow us to take part in the national silence at 11 o'clock. As always, we have tea and coffee after the service in the hall. Please come and join us and pass on all your news and catch up with those you've maybe not seen for a while. I must make an apology. I have a nasty suspicion my voice is going to start to croak an awful lot during the service. So if it does, bear with me. I'll keep, I'll keep it as lubricated as I can. And I promise it's just water. <laughs> This morning's call to worship is in the form of a Celtic prayer, celebrating the end of harvest and the advent of autumn. And I think it's particularly appropriate given the current stormy situation we've found ourselves in the last few weeks. So let's 
step. Let's come together as a, as a peer to begin our worship. Let us pray. In the fading of the summer sun, the sharpening of days, cooling breeze, swallows flight and moonlight rays, we see the Creator's hand. In the brownie of leaves once green, morning mists often chill, fruit that falls, feels frost's first kiss, we see the Creator's hand. Creator God, forgive our moments of ingratitude, the spiritual blindness that prevents us from appreciating the wonder that is this world, the endless cycle of nature, of life and death and rebirth. Forgive us for taking without giving, reaping without sowing. Open our eyes to see, our lips to praise, our hands to share, and may our feet tread lightly on the road. Amen. Let us begin our worship this morning by singing that great hymn 352, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, 352.
worship last Sunday where I was away. It's always a lovely thing to have uh, friends like Ian who will be able to come and lead worship here. So I'm delighted that he was able to do that. Uh, so my thanks to him. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, it is by you that all things are held together. As we gather here today, both in person and by the wonders of technology, help us to see all the ways you are at work in the world. Draw us ever closer to you, so that we may see each other as you see us. Encourage us to look out not only for ourselves but also for others as we all continue our struggles in these strange, unprecedented times. Your promise is that whenever we call on, whenever we call on you, you will answer us with your presence. We know that we can trust in your promise and are thankful for it, especially at a time when promises made by so many who have an impact on our lives are broken with impunity. Be with us today, Lord, and accept our worship in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Faithful God, you honour your promises day by day and age by age. We can be a forgetful people, living our lives unheeding of you. Forgive us when we are inclined to forget you, and help us to trust in you more fully. Patient God, your purposes span the centuries and time is in your hands. We can be an impatient people, craving instant gratification. Forgive us when we are impatient with you and with others, and help us to move at your pace. Merciful God, you are slow to anger and quick to forgive. We can be a resentful people, aggrieved when others offend us. Forgive us when we hold on to our anger, and help us to extend your grace to others. Loving God, you love us passionately, and gave you all of us. We can be a hard-hearted people withholding ourselves from others. Forgive us for the meanness of our love and help us to love generously as you do. Perfect God, you are holy and lack nothing. We are an imperfect people, flawed and full of faults. Do not hold our failures against us and help us each day to be changed more into your likeness. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us. We thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times. We thank you for the food on our tables and while doing so we remember the hungry. For the roof over our heads and we think of those not as fortunate as us. We thank you for our health and we remember the sick in mind, body and spirit. For the opportunity to spend our time with family and friends but we remember those who are alone. We thank you for the freedom to worship and pray without fear, but remember those who are persecuted. We thank you for each precious new morning and for the, our rest at the end of each day. Renew us and fill us with your joy and peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. And now let us join our voices together with believers around the world in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
first reading is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and had been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ we could have a certain authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. So let's sing again from the hymn book, hymn number 506. All I was held here, 506.
John 22, reading verses 34 to 46. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him the Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Amen. Thanks, David. Let's sing the uh, hymn that's on your order of service, so on the other side of your order of service. It's from Mission Phase number one. The new plan that I give to you, and we'll sing the whole thing through twice. So, hymn of it on the order of service, a new commandment I give unto you. Would you respond 
Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. You got that? When I say and so we pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. That's the response. Now we can pray. God of mercy, we lay before you the hearts, minds and bodies of all those suffering from violence in the occupied Palestinian territory and in Israel. Shower upon all the people of this holy land the spirit of justice and reconciliation. And so we pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. In you, Lord, our life is connected, and all the earth and its land are to be cherished, not controlled. Your gifts are for all, yet as we see the violence and hatred in the land called holy, and see the signs of climate breakdown, help us all to work to live in communion. And so we pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. As people of many religions remind us, all humanity is connected. No one is really free until all are free. Help us to pray for all in Israel and all in the Palestinian territories. We pray for those who live in fear of the other, for all who consider violence to be the way forward. We pray for all who are acting in hate, who by acting in hate dehumanize themselves. And so we pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. These things we pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. And our next hymn is hymn 694 from the hymn book. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Six, nine, four.
and my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. <coughs> As you can imagine, this has been a difficult week to try and prepare a meaningful talk in the light of circumstances in the Middle East. What can I say that has not been said more eloquently, more powerfully and with greater impact by others? In these situations, language also matters. It can matter a great deal. What can be said that will be supportive to the victims without either sounding patronising or alienating those on the other side or those who perceive that you're speaking about the other. Everyone is suffering. I know from the discussions within my university the things we've been trying to negotiate through this week. How do we support our Palestinian students on the one hand and our Jewish students on the other hand? Where is the balance? And in the danger, the danger is in trying to find a balance, we say nothing at all for the fear of upsetting someone. But in avoiding saying anything, we abdicate our responsibilities entirely and end up being of no earthly use to anyone in helping to find solutions to the situation. So this morning I will speak through the lecture and reading that we have and try to say something that might be naval. But most importantly it will come from my heart and from my reflections on our scripture for today. Let's begin with that scripture. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Everything that's written in the Law and the Prophets is based on these two commandments. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? A mantra that I know many people have tried to live by through the ages. But it can be so hard to truly live by those words. Jesus was a living embodiment of how it should be done. But few others have even come close to living by those words. As with so many things, the simpler it sounds, the more complex it is in reality. In other teaching, Jesus pointed out that when you are wronged, it's important not to retaliate, but to turn the other cheek or to offer your coat as well as your shirt when someone demands it of you. And the only instance we have of violence in the Gospels is when Jesus was arrested and Peter drew his sword and cut the ear of one of the attendants that were with the arresting party. Now this could have and probably would have been the cue for a major confrontation. But instead Jesus diffused the situation, rebuked Peter and healed the man who had lost his ear. For Jesus, violence was not the answer. Even though he knew perfectly well, he was about to meet an incredibly violent end. Jesus sought reconciliation and looked to bring people together rather than dividing and conquering. For us, as we watch the horrifying violence that's exploded in the Middle East in recent weeks, we have to find ways to promote the cause of reconciliation and peace rather than going down the road of continuing violence. The conflict in the Middle East seems intractable. It has been a feature of life in that region for decades, if not for centuries. But at some point, something has to change if there is ever to be real and effective peace. 
Someone at some point is going to have to step out from behind the barricades and begin to be willing to start the process of compromise and conflict resolution. And as part of that process, others are going to have to take a leap of faith and join that bid for peace. In doing so, they will have to accept that the risks will be enormous, both for their reputations and probably for their personhoods. If people are to find peace that everyone says they crave, someone has to start the ball rolling. There are examples from my lifetimes of conflicts that have been resolved after a great deal of pain because protagonists on both sides have recognised the futility of continuing the conflict they have been part of. South Africa and Northern Ireland both come to mind as places where individuals took a leap of faith in order to break the deadlock. Nelson Mandela is an obvious example for South Africa, but we must not forget the role of the President of the Republic at that time, F.W. de Klerk, the white president of the state, the man who said and recognised that apartheid was no longer a credible option. Change was required, he recognised that. And he was best placed to make it happen. It began a long process that continues to this day of reconciliation and recognition of the hearts that have been inflicted by all sides. Mandela had the grace to accept the role of being the channel to bring people together. But the clerk played a crucial part in setting the conditions for South Africa to move away from its past. It's not to be a smooth path, path, path to peace. And mistakes have been made. But I hope and pray that South Africa will never return to the dark place it found itself in through the decades of apartheid. I also mentioned the peace process that's taken place in Northern Ireland. Again, by no means the perfect solution. Life is still difficult in Northern Ireland. But it's better than it was. Implacable foes realised that they had to take the first steps towards reconciliation in order for the guns to be silenced and people to begin working together rather than against each other. The image of Ian Paisley and Martin McGuinness shaking hands and sharing a joke demonstrated that those who had been symbols of hatred for the other could one day find a way to work together for the benefit of all. The problems remain, but now people speak to each other rather than fighting at every turn. Peace is a fragile thing. That is never more clearly demonstrated than in the Middle East, but attempts in the past have been made Met, met with hostility and undermined by fundamentalism on every side. Compromise is often viewed as a dirty word. But compromise is the only way we can all learn to live together. Whether it's at the level of international relations or in our personal lives. It is compromise that allows us all to live in some form of peace. It may not be perfect but it's better than the alternative of ongoing conflict. A conflict that serves the purpose only of those who live for violence and war. There is a saying that we should never let the quest for protection get in the way of the achievement of a good solution. And so often nothing has been achieved because everyone was looking for the perfect solution. In the messy world in which we live, we need to see what is achievable and what can offer a good solution, rather than always striving for a perfect resolution 
that will never be achieved. Jesus recognised that there were times when Solomon had to step forward and make the breakthrough towards peace. He sacrificed himself to allow us a better relationship with God. We have so often wanted to achieve perfection in that relationship and then be disappointed and disheartened when we couldn't do so. And sometimes we've turned away as a result. Jesus didn't look for perfection. He went for where people were. He found them in their place and then built the relationship they needed. God continues to seek us out, not for a perfect relationship, but for a relationship that begins with good. He's willing to compromise in that relationship to allow us to develop something better for the future. But we are so often an all or nothing people, seeking perfection, but not realising that we are not capable in doing so unless we begin with a good relationship. Compromise might seem like a dirty word, but it's so important that we recognise that we have to start somewhere, in any situation, no matter how small or how large. Who is going to be the person or the people who step forward now in the Middle East? to make the gesture that starts the process of peacemaking? What role can the international community play through the United Nations? Let us pray with all our hearts and all our strength that God can encourage those who have influence to take their courage in their hands and make the first moves towards peace and the saving of many more lives. To love our neighbours needs to be more than fine words. It takes brave actions and real faith de to demonstrate that love conquers hate. Jesus, even as he faced his impending death, refused to be drawn into conflict and healed the injured man. Jesus always reminds us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. So let us do all we can, even here in this small corner of faith, to pray and support efforts for peace, for love, for our neighbours, whoever they may be, whoever they may be, whatever they have done. Peace is so much more important and requires reconciliation. Requires people to say, we will put the past behind us and build a new relationship with each other. Let us hope and pray for that strength and that courage and that love to shine through. Amen. May God add his blessing to these words. Let us sing again from the hymn book, hymn 159. Lord, for the years. 159.
bring our prayers for dedication and for the world. Let's pray especially this morning for all those affected by the recent extreme weather and flooding, especially in Brecon, but I know it's been happening in other parts of the country as well. I'm sure some of you will be only too familiar with the devastating impact of losing your possessions and your home to water and can empathise with those trying to clear up while more rain falls from the sky even as we speak this morning. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we bring our offerings to you for dedication. We bring ourselves as well to be your eyes and ears, your hands and feet, serving and praising your name in all we do. Bless us and bless our offerings, that we may in turn be a blessing to you. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, for you love us with an everlasting love. We rejoice that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to show your love to each other at all times. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, we give thanks for the fellowship of the Church and for all who have taught us the faith. We pray for preachers and teachers, for evangelists and Bible translators. We ask your blessing upon all study groups and those who are learning to pray. We remember all who are seeking to grow in love of you and in faith. God of love, hear us and help us. Loving God, we give thanks for all who reveal your love and care through dedicated lives. We ask your blessing upon all those who work among the deprived and underprivileged peoples of the world. We remember all who seek to bring peace and unity to communities and nations. We pray for all who are homeless and in need. Loving God, we give thanks for all who have shown us your love and care. We ask your blessing upon our homes and loved ones. Remember all who are separated from their loved ones through illness or circumstance. We pray especially for the lonely and any who feel unloved. Loving God, we thank you for all who reveal love through working in the healing professions. We pray for doctors and nurses, and remember all who ensure the smooth running of hospitals and clinics. We ask your blessing on all who are ill or struggling with long-term health conditions, especially those who have no one to care for them. And now, Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we bring before you all those we know of, in need of your care, your compassion, your comfort, and your love at this time.
and harvest. And we bless each other that the beauty of this world and the love that created it might be expressed through our lives and be a blessing to others now and always. These things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.